Sanskrit. And everyone can repeat. Ata chainam nitya jatam. Ata chainam nitya jatam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Tapi tvam mahabaho. Tapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam sochitum arhasi. Nainam sochitum arhasi. Atachainam nitya jatam. Atachainam nitya jatam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam sochitum arhasi. Nainam sochitum arhasi. Tachainam nitya jatam. Atachainam nitya jatam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. I am so cheatum arhasi. I am so cheatum arhasi. Atachainam nitya jatam. Atachainam nitya jatam. Nityam vamana yasi mitam. Nityam vamana yasi mitam. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Nam so shanti arhasi. Nainam so shanti arhasi. Atachainam nitya jatam. Atachainam nitya jatam. Nityam vamanya semratam. Nityam vamanyase mritam. Tapi tvam mahabaho. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam so chitum arhasi. Nainam so chitum arhasi. Ata chainam nitya jatam. Ata chainam nitya jatam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Nityam va manyase mritam. Tata pitva mahabaho. Tata pitva mahabaho. Nainam so shita marhasi. Nainam so shita marhasi. Atha chainam nitya jato. Prabhuji, can you flip the screen? Yeah, you. The screen went away. I guess nobody else is allowed to chant. Atha chainam nitya jatam. Atha chainam nitya jatam. Nityam vamana se mritam. Nityam vamana se mritam. Tathapi tvam mahabaho. Tathapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam shochitum arhasi. Nainam shochitum arhasi. Go ahead, Manishi. Atta chainam nitya jatam. Atta chainam nitya jatam. Nityam vamanya semritam. Nityam vamanya semritam. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Tatapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam shochitum arhasi. Nainam sochitam arhasi. Atachainam nitya jatam. 
Atta chayinam nitya jatam. Nityam vamanaya semratam. Nityam vamanaya semratam. Tathapi tvam mahabaho. Tathapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam so chitumar hasi. Nainam so chitumar hasi. Atta chayinam nitya jatam. Atta chayinam nitya jatam. Nittang vaman nashimritam. Nityam vaman nashimritam. Tathapi tvam mahabaho. Tathapi tvam mahabaho. Nainam so chitum arhasi. Nainam so chitum arhasi. Atta chayinam nitya jatam. Atta chayinam nitya jatam. Nityam va manashyem rutam. Nityam va manashyem rutam. Tata pitvam mahabaho. Tata pitvam mahabaho. Nainam sochitum arhasi. Nainam sochitum arhasi. Atta. 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 If, however. If, however. Ta. Cha. Cha. Also. 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 Enam. 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 This soul. This soul. Nityajatam. Nityajatam. Always born. Nityam. 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 Forever. Forever. Va. Va. Either. Either. Manyase. Manyase. You so think. You so think. Mritam. Mritam. Dead. 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 Ta api. Still. Still. From. From. You. 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 Mahabaho. Mahabaho. Mighty armed one. Oh mighty armed one. Na. 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 Never. 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 Enum. Enum. About the soul. About the soul. So she told. So she told. To lament. To lament. Our husband. Our husband. Deserve. Deserve. Now, if everyone could shut off their mics and and turn on their videos. If, however, you think that the soul or the symptoms of life. Is always born and dies forever. You still have no reason to lament, Almighty Om. Purport. There was always a class of philosophers, almost akin to the Buddhists, who do not believe in the separate existence of the soul beyond the body. When Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita, it appears that such philosophers existed. And they were known as the Lokayatikas and Vibhasikas. Such philosophers maintain that life symptoms take place at a certain mature condition of material combination. The modern material scientists and materialist philosophers also think similarly. According to them, the body is a combination of physical elements and at a certain stage of life, symptoms develop by interaction of the physical and chemical elements. The science of anthropology is based on this philosophy. Currently, many pseudo uh, religions now becoming fashionable in America are also adhering to this philosophy, as well as to the as well as to the nihilistic non-devotional Buddhist sect. Oops. 
Even if Arjun did not believe in the existence of the soul, as is the Vaibhasika philosophy, there would still have been no cause for lamentation. No one laments the loss of a certain bulk of chemicals and stops discharging his prescribed duty. On the other hand, in modern science and scientific warfare, so many tons of chemicals are wasted for achieving victory over the enemy. According to the Vaibhasika philosophy, the so-called soul or Atma vanishes along with the deterioration of the body. So in any case, whether Arjuna accepted the Vedic conclusion that there is an atomic soul or he did not believe in the existence of the soul, he had no reason to lament. According to this theory, since there are so many living entities generated out of matter every moment and so many of them are being vanquished every moment, there is no need to grieve for such incidents. If there were no rebirth of, for the soul, Arjuna had no reason to be afraid of being affected by sinful reactions due to his killing his grandfather and teacher. But at the same time, Krishna sarcastically addressed Arjuna as Mahabahu, mighty arm, because he at least did not accept the theory of the Vaibhasikas, which leaves leaves aside the Vedic wisdom. As a Kshatriya, Arjun belonged to the Vedic culture and it behooved him to continue to follow its principles. Atachainam nitya jatam nityam va manyase mritam tatapitvam mahabaho nainam suchitum arhasi. If, however, you think that the soul or the symptoms of life, is always born and dies forever. You still have no reason to lament, O mighty Om. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Namaste Sasunivadi Prasthacha De Satarane So I'm going to put a different view. Oh, I don't know, here's the view gallery view to see how many people actually turned on their videos few people unfortunately we still have the majority that did not turn on their video videos okay so if you think that the soul is born and always dies still you have no reason not to turn on your videos So here Arjun, Krishna is telling Arjun, first he tells him all about the, the soul and how the soul is eternal. You can't kill the soul. The soul goes on. It, whether you go to a heavenly planet, or you go somewhere else. And if they die in the battle, they go to the heavenly planet. He was saying all these things that's going to happen. But then there is a certain class of men, it's interesting how Prabhupada points out that even at the time of Krishna people, there were certain people who believed this, that I don't know what percentage, now there's an awful lot of atheists who believe that the symptoms of life, they come at a certain combination of matter, uh, then, then that is how life begins. And then life ends when there's, there's chemicals, I don't know what happens to them but then life also ends at a certain time. Uh, and there, there is no soul, it just happens. There was a scientist when Prabhupada was here saying the same thing. And Hansa, Hamsa Duda, he wrote to this scientist because the scientist said that life comes at a combination of certain amino acids. When these certain amino acids get together, life comes out of this combination. So Hansa Dudu, who I believe never even graduated high school, he started arguing with this scientist. This was in the newspaper. The scientist wrote some argument in the newspaper. Hansa Rupa, Hamsa Duda, sorry, Hamsa Duda, who actually recently uh, had left his body, uh, 
but because everybody is getting older and all Prabhupada disciples older and they're leaving their bodies. Uh, so, but there is the soul, so they, they go on. But in any case, so he was arguing in the newspaper and the newspaper was printing his arguments against this scientist. And he challenged the scientist that he would give him something like so many lakhs of rupees if he can prove this theory. He said, I can pre I'll, I'll present you with the amino acids, you make life. And he was making fun of the scientists in this way because, and, and even the devotees were saying, you can't say that, you know, what are we gonna do where, where we don't have that much money? But he said it anyway, because he was an American. <laughs> You could say anything. <laughs> uh, but of course, he also had faith that he can't make life out of um, um, chemicals. Uh, so it really looked good for the devotees, you know, this, this whole thing. And Prabhupada read these things and he was very pleased with Hansa Duda for, for, for challenging this bogus scientist in this way. We shouldn't just sit back when people are saying nonsense things. Not, not so much somebody says something, but especially when they're publishing these things. That this is, you know, and, and in India, you have a lot of people, I mean, they read the newspapers, it's really important. Prabhupada even gave the example about the newspapers. He, he said that there was a, a, a preacher in somewhere, I don't know, let's say West Virginia or something, and they, they said, uh, he was describing what hell was like. And these people all work in the cold mine, cold mines. So he was describing hell as being very dark and dirty. And, you know, he didn't describe hell the way we normally think of hell with fire, but he described it more like if, you know, being in the coal mines. So the coal miners didn't really see anything wrong with hell. But then he said, there, there are no newspapers in hell. And then they got all disturbed. Oh, we don't want to go there because <laughs> there's no newspapers in hell. So people are really into newspapers is kind of what Prabhupada is saying. Uh, so they, they read the newspapers and, and this is where Hamsa Duda was uh, arguing with this, uh, this scientist. And making the scientists look really bad and foolish because he makes these statements, but he can't back them up. You know, so people say so many things. So here, Krishna is giving the same argument to Arjun, not for Arjun's sake, because Arjun followed Vedic culture. He understood the the the, the soul is eternal. Uh, he understood that as a kshatri, if you fight in this battle and you die, you, you get to go to the heavenly kingdom. So he knew that you go, not the body goes, the body is still here. So he knew you're different from the body and you go there. He was, uh, but proud, I mean, but Krishna is saying this for the people, he said, even at that time, but certainly at this time, there are a lot of people who think like this. So why lament? Okay, if, ever, if there is no God, what is your body? A combination of chemicals. At a certain time, life symptoms appear. So what is that value of these chemicals? I, I remember they put a value on it, the devotees. I don't know like how much it would cost to, to put all these chemicals together. And it was only a few dollars. So if you're in a if you're in a laboratory and you're mixing chemicals and you, you spill some chemicals worth like ten dollars, you're not gonna lament over it and cry for days over it. It's just a bunch of chemicals. So why, if you are just a combination of chemicals, why do you lament when you when there's chemicals when there's no more life symptoms? You know, why would you lament if, if, because these chemicals are now gone and dissolving back into the earth? Why would you lament about it? So this was just an argument that Krishna, I mean, we should use these arguments against these people because when someone dies, they do lament. 
When their wife dies, their husband dies, their parents die, their uncles die, their children die. Whenever people die that they have some affection for, they lament. Why do you lament if it's just a bunch of chemicals? I don't know what, something just came up on my computer, bowling and shoes. I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm not going bowling. Uh, so so uh, we should learn these things for when we are preaching. If that's what people believe, okay, if that's the truth, then why would you mind if your girlfriend dies? Why should it bother you? You know, when we're preaching to someone. Because it does, because the, you know, that soul is gone. You had a relationship with that soul. And now they're gone, they're still existing. So in that sense, you shouldn't lament either. But we become attached to these bodies, uh, even though we're not these bodies. But these bodies are, the soul is, is coming through this filter of this body. And even that, we see the soul even in that form and we become attached. But because we don't really see the soul, we just see the body, we become attached to the body. We have to become attached to the soul. And the soul, of course, is eternal. So the person, you don't lament even for the person because they still exist. And if they're into Krishna consciousness, they're in a better situation now. They're never at a loss. Why is this thing, Shiva, why is all this ads come up while I'm doing this? I don't know. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read another verse. But before I read another verse, does anyone have any questions or comments? Yes, who is that? Radhika, is that you? Do you have a question? You just raised your hand, but you don't have a question. Oh, you didn't like my class. What are you trying to say? Okay. <laughs> okay, anyone have any questions? If you do, just turn on your mic. It'd be easier for me to hear you than to see you, especially with half the people I can't see you. I'm trying every week to try to get people to turn on their videos. It's just so much more personal. This is a personal philosophy, talking about persons. Now, I know I can't see you because you're the soul, but at least like to see you, the body you happen to have in this life. Prabhu, you put some prize for them. So they turn on their I, I, I just didn't want to give the Surpanaka Darshan, but he requested anyway, you know. <laughs> Yes, no, that's fine. I'd rather any darshan than no darshan. Also, Gita Mali, you, you just have your camera too close to you, too. I can't hear you. We can't hear you. You're muted, I guess. Muted, yeah, that's because I'm on a phone. I don't have a laptop. Oh. oh. I'm holding the phone up all the time. I really want to keep it down, but... <laughs> oh well I appreciate it all your austerity <laughs> just for you Pierre thank you <laughs> okay any questions on this verse or comments okay well I'm going to go on to the next verse let's see Oh, text 27. Well, you can repeat. I'm not only going to chant the Sanskrit once, but you can repeat. Jatasya hi druvom rityur. Druvam jannam ritasya cha. Druvam jannam ritasya cha. Asmat ritasya cha. Tasma da Pariharati Tasma da Pariharati Natvam Suchi Tumarhasi Natvam Suchi Tumarhasi 
One who has taken his birth is sure to die, and after death, one is sure to take birth again. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. Report by Srila Prabhupada. One has to take birth according to one's activities of life. And after finishing one term of activities, one has to die to take birth for the next. In this way, one is going through one cycle of birth and death after another without liberation. This cycle of birth and death does not, however, support unnecessary murder, slaughter, and war. But at the same time, violence and war are an inevitable factors in human society for keeping law and order. The battle occurred, etc., being the will of the Supreme was an inevitable event. And to fight for the right cause is the duty of Kshatriya. Why should he be afraid of, be afraid of or aggrieved at the death of his relatives since he was discharging his proper duty? He did not deserve to break the law, thereby becoming subjected to the reactions of sinful acts of which he was so afraid. By avoiding the, dis by avoiding the discharge of his proper duty, he would not be able to stop the death of his relatives and he would be degraded due to his selection of the wrong path of action. One who has taken his birth is sure to die and after death one is sure to take birth again. Therefore in the unavoidable discharge of your duties, you should not lament. So uh, in Prabhupada's purport, you're getting your birth now because of what you did in a previous life. So most of the people here are, are were born in India or at least born in Indian families where they know about Krishna, even if they don't know much of anything else, they know about Krishna, something about Krishna. Whereas if you're born in America, especially before Prabhupada came, pretty much no one knew about Krishna except maybe some scholars, but not the average person never knew about Krishna. But by Prabhupada's mercy, uh, it, Krishna has become more of a household word. People know much more about Krishna. So one who has taken birth according to one's activities of life, and after finishing one term of activities, one has to die to take birth for the next. So according to your karma, according to your actions, you get, you're going to get a, a particular body. Your desires how, and how you, how you behave determines what type of body you get in your next life. And for everyone's uh, relief, uh, you guaranteed at least a human body if you make any spiritual progress at all. So if you chant Hare Krishna, you guarantee that minimum a human body. Uh, whereas if you don't make any spiritual advancement at all, you, you do not get a human body. You could become a dog, a hog, a camel, an ass, an elephant, a squirrel, a, an ant, a rodent. That's a whole bunch of categories of rodents. I think a squirrel is in the rodent category. I gave a specific one. But you can, you can take any kind of particular body according to your actions. Now, what do you have to do to become a squirrel? I don't know. Maybe climb trees, jump from one tree to the next. I don't know what you do to become a squirrel. I mean, you're going to get some understanding. Like there is, we give this uh, picture. I don't know if it still is in the Bhagavad Gita, but the person who likes to sleep a lot, and then he takes birth as a bear, and he could sleep for like six months out of the year, uh, undisturbed. A person who, who, who likes to, to, you know, to stand naked uh, and show his naked body can take birth as a tree and stand naked for hundreds of years. A person who doesn't discriminate with what he eats 
eats anything and everything. He could take birth as a hog, wear that type of body. You can eat anything and everything. Uh, so we get different bodies according to uh, our, our desire or our consciousness. And if we're a little bit God conscious, even just a little, we guarantee at least human birth so we can continue because human life is meant for self-realization. It's meant for God realization. It's not meant for just eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Uh, we do eat, sleep, mate, and defend. And the animals eat, sleep, mate, and defend, but they can't understand who God is, who they are, and their relationship with God, but we can. And if we make some steps in that, then we get a human birth because the humans are, 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 have that ability to understand God. The dog can't understand God. He can learn certain things. A monkey can learn a lot of things, but they can't understand God, but we can. And if we utilize this life even a little, and the more we become God conscious, then the better body we get in our next life. And if we become fully God conscious, then we get a complete spiritual body, our eternal spiritual body. We have an eternal form, but we don't even know who it is or what we look like, whether we're male or female, or we could even be an animal. We could be a cow or in the spiritual world. And nobody, the cows are, are, are surabi cows and they give unlimited milk for Krishna's pleasure. I'm not saying you're a cow. I don't know what you are. I don't know what I am, but, uh, but by chanting Hare Krishna, hopefully eventually we'll get to that, that place and find out who we are. And we're gonna be very happy with whoever we are because that's our eternal relationship. Prabhupada gave the example, it's like, you know, the gopis are the highest, but someone might like being a cowherd boy. It's more comfortable being a cowherd boy playing with Krishna than being a, a lover of Krishna like the gopis. Uh, and Prabhupada gives the example of fruits, like a mango is, a, is considered the king of fruits and people like mangoes, uh, but also somebody likes a banana more than they like a mango. It's just a different taste. Someone might like an apple more than a mango. Uh, so we have different tastes and uh, according to that, whatever particular taste we have, that's what's going to make us the happiest when we actually go back to the spiritual world. But if we're not ready to go back, we'll, the, we'll get a better and better body, more suitable for, for continuing our Krishna consciousness. Now, they're the heavenly planets. There's uh, heavenly planets where you enjoy like anything, but there's also higher planets where they're just very Krishna conscious and they, they just they just hear and chant about Krishna. You know, this is what they do in Brahma Loka, like on different planets like that. I don't know all the planets, but I know you can read about them in, in, uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And there's certain planets which are very conducive for, for going directly to Krishna after that, after a birth on those planets, because the whole thing is, it's like a, you know, of course, we just hear and chant about Krishna your whole life. So at the end of your life, you, you, you're ready to go back to Krishna. Uh, so I was going to say, after finishing one term of activities, one has to die to take birth for the next. And according to what we, our karma, how we act and how we behave. I mean, people on this call are interested in Krishna consciousness, so you wouldn't be on this call. So this is, this is the right actions you should be doing in order to not have to take birth again in your next life. It's not like just coming on this call, that's gonna solve the problems, but that's some of the steps you have to take. Uh, you have to you know, make yourself, make, put yourself in a situation where it's more conducive for you to learn about Krishna. So in this way, one is going to one cycle of birth and death after another without liberation. The cycle of birth and death does not, however, support unnecessary murder, slaughter, and war. But at the same time, violence and war are, in, are inevitable factors in human society for keeping law and order. Okay, so now I can kill a cow 
because this, it doesn't kill him. He just goes to another body. So someone can think like that. This is, this is wrong because if you kill the cow, number one, the cow has to suffer more because the cow has so much time he's supposed to spend in that cow's body, the soul in that cow's body. So if you kill him, then he has to go to birth again and come back again as a cow to finish that duration of time. And then you kill him again, he has to come back again. So it's, it's sinful because it's, it's worse for, the, for that soul and it's also worse for you because you're, you're, you're committing a sin and then there you, therefore you're going to have to suffer the reaction of that sin and you have to take birth in a lower species of life, species of life for committing these sins. Uh, so committing sins uh, is, you know, of course it's bad karma and it means repeated birth and death. It's, it's prolonging your stay in this material world because you have to suffer those reactions. So it's not like it's okay to do because you're not killing the, the soul, it's because you can't kill the soul. But there is a proper behavior that one should, should follow in human society. Animals have no rules and regulations they have to follow. I mean, it's not sinful if they do something in, if they eat meat, it's not sinful for an animal to eat meat, but for a human to eat meat, it's sinful. Uh, so we, we have to follow what the, the laws are for human life. It says people today are not even considered human, not all people, but people, human life means following Varnashram Dharma, following Vedic principles. That's the beginning of human life. It also says a tato brahma jignasa. Now in the human form of life is a time to inquire about the absolute truth. So human beings inquire about the absolute truth, not just inquire about eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. And if you get in conversations with people who are non-devotees, that's their whole conversation is eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. It boils down to that and the weather. They always talk about the weather too. But we can talk about the weather too. That's okay. But we're talking about the weather is because we have to do our service. We have to make sure, you know, we have to prepare for it. Uh, but our service is for spreading Krishna consciousness. That's what we have to do to please Krishna. We have to work at spread. Even our temple, a temple is there. We don't need a temple. We can hear and chant. We can just get together anywhere, but it's there for spreading Krishna consciousness to try to get other people so that those souls can make some progress in spiritual life and then they and can guarantee at least a human birth in the next life. So this is a, it's a preaching movement, but not, not, not smashing movement, like you just smash their philosophy. Uh, but but it's for preaching to try to help people become more human, more spiritual. Uh, cycle of birth and death does not, however, support yeah the killing of animals. So yeah, we can't kill animals and thinking it's okay because we're not killing them; we're just killing their body. But that's that's sinful, and it's bad bad for the animals too. So in this particular case, the battle of Kurukshetra was Krishna's desire. He's the one that wanted this to happen. Uh, and all those Kurukshetrias actually who die will go to the heavenly planets in this war. So you're not hurting them. So uh, one of the arguments Arjun was giving in the beginning is that this is a, a bad thing to do because if you, you have this war, then all these men are gonna die. Uh, you know, so many men are gonna die and therefore the women are not gonna be protected because the woman is supposed to be protected by the husbands and then they'll be exploited by other men. Then they'll have unwanted progeny, unwanted children. And there, and then those unwanted children are very bad in society. They're not uh, wholesome, you might say, uh, you know, by, by uh, 
Vedic culture where you, you, you want to have a child and you prepare for the child, but there'll be unwanted children. And therefore, we'll have to suffer the sinful reaction of all these unwanted children. This was a, a argument that, that Arjun was giving to Krishna of why we shouldn't fight this war. Because how is society gonna go on without all the men to protect the woman? And, and, and we're the one killing them, so we're gonna have to suffer for that. And here, uh, Prabhupada is pointing out, uh, he did not deserve to break the law. He'd be breaking the law by not doing his duty. He has a duty to perform. And ultimately, these people in this war, they're already dead. They're going to die whether he fights or he doesn't fight. This is Krishna's will. He already has this plan. He's simply giving Krishna credit, even in spreading Krishna consciousness, even making devotees. So many people are going to become devotees, whether we do anything or not. But it's to our credit if we do something, if we try to help people become devotees, then we benefit from that. So it's to our credit. Uh, and it's pleasing Krishna. This is how it's the best way we can please Krishna. So if he didn't act, thereby becoming subjected to the reactions of sinful acts of which he was so afraid. He was so afraid to do a sinful act of killing all these people, then there's unwanted progeny and will be responsible for that. Women will not be protected. But here, Prabhupada's pointing out that if he doesn't fight, then, that, then there's going to be uh, act, reactions for his sin of not acting. It's also a sin not to act. Sometimes you, 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 you have to do your duty. If you don't do it, that's sinful. You're supposed to wake up the deities in the morning and you just don't feel like doing it and you don't tell anybody else and the deities don't get woken up. There's going to be some reaction to that. I mean, sometimes it's a whole different thing. You, 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 know, you, you do it every single day and then one day your alarm doesn't work and you don't get up. That's, that, there might be a reaction to that too. I don't know, but it's certainly not going to be the same thing while you're willfully neglecting to do your duty. So by avoiding the discharge of his proper duty, he would not be able to stop the death of his relatives and he would be degraded due to his selection of the wrong path of action. So we have to know what we have to know what we're supposed to do, all of us, as far as Krishna consciousness, as far as your job, you know, as long as you, you know, there's certain jobs you really shouldn't do, you shouldn't work in a slaughterhouse, you shouldn't work at a Burger King, you shouldn't do certain things that, that are obviously sinful, you know, but at the same time, you know, you, you have to do a job. So you, I mean, even when you work with computers, you may be making programs for people who are using it in the meat industry. So there may be some reaction to that. So therefore we chant Hare Krishna to counteract even on not even knowing we're committing sinful acts. We, we, we chant Hare Krishna. So we, 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 we practice Krishna consciousness. But when I, when I talk about duty is the responsibility you should take up in Krishna consciousness. Everyone should take up some responsibility, some service to, to perform that I'm going to do this uh, either on, on a regular basis or just for the short time I'm going to do it, but I take some responsibility and I do that no matter what. I do that whether people encourage me or they don't say anything to me. I do it whether I'm happy or I'm not happy. This is this is a responsibility. So Arjun is a kshatriya. He's taken on this responsibility. And whether he likes it or not, he does it. He does it because it's his duty. And we should take on some responsibility within this ISKCON movement and make sure we make ourselves do it, no matter how we feel or who doesn't like me or who does like me. It, it nothing it doesn't matter you know, you know, what what whether people like it or not we we have to do it because Srila Prabhupada likes it and Krishna likes it and we have to do it for for their pleasure so we should take some responsibility that's how we make more 
uh, spiritual advancement by taking on responsibility like that. So, oh, we still got some time, but does anyone have any questions or comments? <laughs> Don't everybody talk at once now. <laughs> So why don't we feel the urgency that we could die any minute? That's illusion. That's what it is. Even it's, Maharaj it's pretty Yudhisthira, amazing, I know. Maharaj Yudhisthira was asked what, what is the greatest thing? It's, and he said how, how you see your grand father die, you see your father die, you see relatives die, you see so many people die, but still you think you're not going to die. Now all of us, everyone, even not us, even the people who don't believe in God will say, yeah, they know they're going to die. But they, it's always in the future. It's not now. It's always in the future. But actually, we can die at any moment. At any single moment, we can die. And somebody is dying at every single moment, you know, but we, it's just somebody else, not us. Uh, and, and as you're getting older, you have to see how many years do I have left? Maximum. You know, it's not many years left. Let me do something now before I finally die because I'm going to. And I've done it so many times. We died so many times. I think what you said before, Gita Mala, uh, which I really like, is uh, if you want to be successfully successful materially, you should think that you're never going to die. And if you want to be successful spiritually, you, got, you should think you're going to die in, in today. In moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's uh, but really good. I was actually reflecting this morning I had a hard time getting up and I was thinking like I could die any minute like or I might not even get out of bed you know and I could be dead because my, recently my aunt died I mean I think I've mentioned it to all of you in India she and this was this past Janmashtami she went to the Janmashtami celebrations she took flowers for Krishna she did all the Tulsi thing that they do in India you know the Ashtotara prayers and everything. She, she had a good time. She was laughing with everybody. She ate all the prasadam. She came home the next day. I mean, next morning she got up and she felt a little bit discomfort, a little bit. And then she went to the bathroom and within 15 minutes she had a stroke and she died. So the previous day when she was at Janmashtami enjoying the festival, I don't think she ever thought for a minute that she would not be existing. I mean, her body at least would not exist the next day. You know? Nobody thinks that. <laughs> right, but, but she did the right thing as if she was thinking that. So if we just get in the habit of hearing and chanting about Krishna, then we right. do the right thing. And then if we die, we don't know when it's going to be, not if we die, when we die. Right. At least she did auspicious things, you know, just before she died. Yes. Well, that's that's transcendental. It's not just yeah. auspicious. Isn't yeah, it? transcendental. Yes, transcendental things just before she died. And every day she said her prayers and everything. And she had just finished that, you know. But I know my sister once says something about yeah, if I ever wake up dead. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> How can you wake up dead? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to say if she died in her sleep, you know, like wake up dead. <laughs> anyway, I have a very intelligent family. <laughs> uh, yes, there's a question. I see a hand raised. And who could that be? It's a young lady. Is that... Tulsi. Tulsi? That Tulsi, it is Tulsi. Haribo, what's your question? So, I have a comment. Just you were saying that if we will kill the cow, it's a, um, it's sinful. So, if we kill a cow in uh, next birth, we will have a cow body. 
If you kill a cow, you may take birth as a cow and be killed again and again and again for many lives. It says for as many hairs that are on the, the body of the cow. So next time you see a cow, try to count all those hairs on his body. And that's how many births you have to take as a cow and get killed if you kill a cow. So it's not very good. It's a very long time, maybe thousands or hundreds of thousands of years mooing. So, Thank you, Prabhuji. Oh, you're welcome. Nice question. And that was a question. And that's what I was looking for. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Now, if you have a comment, we'll take it. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisance. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful class and, and reminding me something. This morning I was thinking I was late uh, for my Mangalarti, waking up Gornita. And then I was just thinking, what would he think? And then you answered it. Thank you. <laughs> what would who think? I was thinking about Gornitai, you know. You yeah, I would make, would you forgive me? I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm late. Well, Gornitai are very merciful. They don't hold any offenses. They don't take <laughs> offense. So good you have Gornitai. If you have Radha and Krishna, I, I, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if I'd want to be around you. <laughs> what about Jagannath Prabhuji? What? What about Jagannath? I had the same problem. With Jagannath? Jagannath is also merciful, but not as much. He does take some offense, but not as much as as uh, Radha and Krishna. And, and it's not See, as... See, this is what one devotee had told me, and that was the wrong thing to tell me. On weekdays, I'm regular because I have work. I have a schedule. I have to follow the schedule. But on weekends, I end up sleeping late or I stay up late the night before and I'm not able to get up. And this devotee had said, oh, they're not temple deities, they're home deities. So let the deities also sleep late on weekends. You know, that's what I was told. And now I'm pretty lax about it. And nobody should have told me that because now I, whatever time I wake up, that's the time, you know, I don't have a fixed time. Now that is a bad thing, right? I just got your answer today, so. It's, uh, it's definitely a big, big difference with home deities. You have different standards. And, and then the, but can you wake them up late on weekends is my question well you shouldn't but i don't think it's as big an offense as an offense as it is in the temple you have temple deities and you you're know, saying radha and krishna expect surrender but gornitai are more merciful huh? <laughs> gornitai are they they don't take offense they, you chant Hare krishna they, they're happy so well if i ever have deities then it has to be gornitai <laughs> yeah I would recommend Gorni Thai for you, Gita Mala. Okay, thank you, Gary. <laughs> yeah, they're very kind. I don't know if I can get an opportunity to get deities. I might have to go straight to Goloka Vrindavan before that. <laughs> but even, I mean, you could you could look at it that, oh, Jagannath wants to take some rest on the weekends. I remember... When I first was learning about Krishna consciousness after about three weeks of going to the temple, they, they, I was told, you know, they get up uh, like at 3.30 in the morning and, 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 and they do different rules. They said, they said uh, you know, they chant 16 rounds a day. I said, I could do that. They no illicit sex. I could do that. No meat, fish or eggs. I could do that. No gambling. I could do that. They get up at 3.30 in the morning. I thought, oh, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. And I, and I remember I asked them, and I was not joking at all. I said, what about on weekends? I figured maybe on weekends I could get extra rest. And, they said, and their answer was, no, sleep is like death. You know, we don't like to sleep. It's like death. It's just, I said, oh, man. I'm gonna like I'm gonna like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Pierre, on that one. <laughs> I mean, that, and even when I did go move in and I did follow that, any time that I stood still, my body without moving, 
for like more than 30 seconds, I'd fall asleep. <laughs> I'd fall asleep standing up. I'd be falling asleep in the, I'm on the phone in the phone booth because they had phone, no cell phones, they had phone booths and I had to call into the temple. And they said, oh, just a minute, I'm gonna be, I'll be right back. And he took about, a, you know, I don't know how long he took, but I know I fell asleep just with the phone, holding the phone, I'm sleeping, sound asleep. It's like, uh, I needed to sleep more. <laughs> I didn't get enough rest. Some people need more rest. Then I was also told if you're, you know, if you're really, really tired and you're falling asleep, then take a cold shower. Okay, so what I did, now this is in the winter in Boston, the water is ice cold, ice cold. And, and uh, I'm falling asleep, I'm gonna fall asleep. And it's in Bhagavatam class. That's, that's like the biggest sleeping pill you could take, Bhagavatam class. And, and then I, and I just run, I just ran, I, got, I, I didn't run out, of, I offered my obeisance, I went out of temple. I just ran, got undressed, took an ice cold shower, got dressed, went back into Bhagavatam, and still I fell asleep. <laughs> you, you don't have devotees with spray, water spray. <laughs> No, we didn't have spray. <laughs> I, 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 so I did what I could. I just couldn't stay awake. It's like, I'm sure Krishna was just probably just laughing. Oh boy, this is this, this. But I'm sure it wasn't like sinful. Or, because I, it's like, you can't do it. You just try your best and it's not possible. That was the hardest thing is not sleeping. You know, sleeping five hours a night. We, we, we had six hours, but we never get to bed on time. Or you, 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 you just, when it's time to fall asleep, you can't fall asleep because you know you got to fall asleep. And then you can't go to sleep because if I don't go to sleep, I'm going to be tired like anything tomorrow. And then I can't even fall asleep because I'm thinking about that. Anyway, I had about eight years like that. <laughs> Oh, Hare Krishna, Pyaar Prabhuji. So just a small uh, comment. I mean, as uh, devotees were discussing, I remember, you know, Prema Sindhu Prabhu, right? He was in Columbus. He gave one class in our uh, congregation. Yeah. So he was mentioning, yeah, he was mentioning on one of the weekends that um, you have all joined because seven o'clock we have the call. So he said, you, you have all joined very nice. I mean, some people, you know, they'll be sleeping, thinking this is a weekend. And But in the material life, in spiritual life, there is no break. But in material life, you think five days you work and two days you sleep for till 10 o'clock, nine o'clock like that. But that doesn't work in spiritual life. So. Right. In spiritual life, you're happy. You don't need a break. Material life, yeah. you can't go. It's just you die. You can't just keep doing this. It's horrible. You know, so you got to work and work and work. But in Krishna consciousness, this work is pleasure. It's joyfully performed. It's joyfully performed. I mean, even if it's a struggle, it's a struggle for Krishna and you feel good doing it. And yeah, when Vallabhi Gopi, when Vallabhi Gopi started the morning program, I was like, it, in the beginning, I was really excited. Then if it, when it became like day after day after day, it wasn't that easy, you know. But then the only reason I actually decided I have to do this is because I was reading Yamuna Devi's you know, book at the time. I mean, part of it, I'm still reading it. And she's, and it's Prabhupada says in that, that you're not serious about your spiritual life unless you rise in the morning, he says. You know? So I said, I guess if, if I have to be serious about my spiritual life, I have to do this. I can tell you on the weekends when I was a kid, and this is true. If I got up at 10 in the morning, it was like I had the whole day ahead of me. It was like up or normally I'd sleep till 12 or, or one o'clock in the afternoon and I'd get up. So it's like if I got up at 10, it was so early. It was so <laughs> nice. That sounds typically American, especially students and younger people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No weekends. But anyway, oh. Oh, we're, we're late. What about our test? Sorry. Did you oh, make yeah. this for us? Yes, so uh, we have a, a, you know, not long. We have a very 
I believe I made just two questions for today. Let okay. me post it. I think I know one of them already. Okay. I hope. Let me. So I get at least one right of my class. Is Prabhuji <laughs> sleeping in the class? <laughs> well, on Radha Damodar party, we have fallen asleep while we're giving class. <laughs> Not just us, everybody. <laughs> the whole class, we all fall asleep. The person giving the class and then the people listen. <laughs> I mean, this is just like four people traveling in a van, but we don't fall asleep. I'm just like you, Pierre. You know how much I valued my sleep. You know what my husband named me, right? <laughs> no, I don't think I know. Do you remember the name he gave me when I was young, like Sukhanidra Devi Das? <laughs> you don't remember? What? I don't remember. What does it mean? It means somebody who loves her sleep, you know, has happiness in her sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know another devotee because, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, sleep is in the mode of ignorance. And this one devotee, he was, he was saying, how, how can it, it, it must be the mode of goodness because it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't initiated at the time, so he names me Sukhanidra Devi Das. I, now you got a new name. Okay, <laughs> so you're going to the program. Okay, I'm, I'm ready for the test. I hope everybody else is. Hare Krishna. Okay, well. Oh, nice question. Just two questions, huh? You get one wrong, you fail. I did? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought so. Today's concession. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a little bit asleep in your class. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think today's quiz was quick. Get all the answers yet? Mm, yeah, Alma, one devotee there. Looks like Nanda Gopal's not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are done all. Don't be too attached, Nanda Gopal, just answer. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. So, oh, a lot of people question, got that right. So the answer is answer to the proof that uh, Pierre Prue was mentioning that uh, he argued with scientists about souls. I like the Hansaraj chemical. <laughs> 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 and next question is. Why did Krishna call Arjuna as Mahabahu in verse number 2.26? Okay, I think the answer is, second one is the correct answer that Sir mentioned in the purport. Um, Arjuna did not accept the theory of that uh, modern philosopher, right? Whatever Vaibhasika or uh, the Prabhupada says, so that's why he mentioned, that's why he called really? Mahabahu, not that powerful. Yeah. Warrior? Yes, oh, Mataji. I'm in good company at least. <laughs> so you are, you got 80 percent, Mataji. I know that's what I'm saying. At least I'm in good company. <laughs> tricky, tricky guy that. Uh, that that's wow. right, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. Glory Hare Krishna. Panchakalpatarubhas Chakra Prasandu Bhai Uchapati Tanam Bhakti Bhyo Vaishnav Ephyo Namam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Piyami.
Hari Bol, Gita Mala, Hari Bol, everybody else. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Bella. Hari Bol. Rise and shine tomorrow, right? <laughs> Hari Bol. Hare Krishna. We'll say the words. It's a fourteen dot four. Sarva yoni shukante ya murta ya sambhavanti ya tasham brahma mahadyonir aham bija pradapita ha sarva yoni shukante ya murta ya sambhavanti ya Tasam Brahma Mahadionir Aham Bija Pradapita Sarvayuni Shukonte Ya Murtaya Sambavantiya Tasam Brahma Mahadionir Aham Bija Pradapita Sarvayuni Shukonte Ya Murtaya Sambavantiya Tasam Brahma Mahadionir Aham Bija Pradapita 
ಸರ್ವಯೋನಿಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತಿಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನಿಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತಿಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನಿಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತಿಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ it should be understood that all the species of life os anapunti are made possible by birth in this material nature and that i am the seed giving father ekshna um anushinta um dipti mata ji you can go oh okay hari krishna prabhu ji ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಯ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟಡ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಓ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕುಂತಿ ಆರ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಬೈ ಬರ್ತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದ ಸೀಡ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಫಾದ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಮತಿ ಅನುಷಿಂತಮತಿ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೇಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೇಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದಿಯೋನೇರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ it should be understood that all species of life o oh, son of kunti are made possible by birth in this material nature and that i am the seed giving father hari krishna hari krishna mata ji janvi rani mata ji hari bol hmm hari bol mata ji sarvayo nishukante mutaya sambhavantiya ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದ್ಯೋ ನಿರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕಾಂತೇಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದ್ಯೋ ನಿರ್ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಾಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕಾಂತೇಯ ಮೃತಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದ್ಯೋ ನೀ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕಾಂತೀಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತೀಯ ತಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಾದ್ಯೋ ನೀ ಅಹಂ ಬೀಜ ಪ್ರದಪಿತ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಪೀಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಓಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕುಂತಿ ಆರ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಬೈ ಬರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಎನ್ ದಟ್ i am the seed giving father sarvayo ishukandeya murtaya sam sambhave bhavanti vaya tacham brahma mahatmachoni am sri vid padapita ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಸಂಭವಂತಿ ಸ್ವಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಹಿತೋನಿ ಅಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ನಿಜ ಪದ ಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಯೋನೀಷು ಕೌಂತೆಯ 
ಸಂಭವಂತಿ as uh, it should be understood that all spices of life son of kinti are made possible uh, by birth and this material nature and that i am the seeding here uh, seed giving father hari bol mata ji hari bol prabhu ji thank you prabhu ಹರೇಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರಭುಷ್ಣಪ್ರಭುಷ್ಣಪ್ರಭುಷ್ಣಪ್ರಭುಷ್ಣಪ್ರಭುಷ್ಣಪ
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Can I start? Yes, Mataji. Go ahead. Okay. Namam Vishnapadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharini Nibhisesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Narasimha Kavacham Vakshe, Prahla Deno Ditampura, Sarvarakshakaram Punyam, Sarvo Padravanashanam, Sarva Sampat Karam Chaiva, Svarka Moksha Pradayakam, Dyatpana Simham Devesham, Hema Simha Sanastitam, Vivratasyam Trinayanam, Sharadindu Samaprabam, Lakshmiya Lingita Vamangam, Vibhu Tibir Upashritam, Chatur Bujam Ko. Malangam Swarna Kundala Shobitam Saroja Shobitoraskam Ratna Keyura Mudritam Tapta Kanchana Sankasham Pita Nirmala Vasasam Indradi Sura Maulishta Spuran Manikya Deepti Bihi Virajita Pada Dvandvam Shenka Chakradi Heti Bihi Garutmata Chavinayat Stuyamanam Mudan Vitam Swaharata Kamala Samvasam Krat Vatu Kavacham Patet Narasim Home Shirapatu Loka Raksharta Sambavaha Sarva Gopi Stambavasa Palam Me Rakshatu Twanim Narasim Home Drishaupatu Soma Suryagni Lochanaha Smritam Me Patu Naraharihi Munivarias to Tipriaha Nasam Me Simhanashas to Mukam Lakshmi Mukapriaha Sarva Vidya Dipa Patu Nasim Horasanam Mama Patram Patwa Indu Vadanam Sada Prahala the Vanditaha Narasim Patu Mekantam Skanda Bubaradan and Takrat Dipyastra Shobita Bujaha Narasim Patu Me Bujau Karau me deva varado narsim ha patu sarvataha Rudayam yogi sadhyas chani vasam patu me harihi Madhyam patu hiranyaksha vaksha kukshi vidaranaha Nabim me patu naraharihi swanabi brahma samstutaha Brahma and akotaya katyam yasya sao patu me katim Guhyam me patu guhyana mantra nam guhya rupa drug Uru Mano Bava Patu Janu Nina Rupa Drug Jange Patu Dara Bara Hatta Yo Sound Rakeshari Sura Raja Prada Patu Pada Menara Harishwaraha Sahastra Sirsha Purusha Patu Mesarva Shastanum Mano Graha Purvata Patu Mahavira Grajok Nitaha Mahavishna Dakshine to Mahajwalas to Nairutaha Paschime patu sarvesho, dishi me sarvato mukaha, Narsim ha patu ayavyam, saumyam bushana vigraha, Ishanyam patu badro me sarva mangala dayakaha, Samsara bayata patu, rutyon rutyon rakeshari, Idam narsim ha kavacham prahala dam kamanditam, Bhaktiman yapate naityam, sarva papai pramuchyate. Putravan, Danavan, Loke, Dirga, Europa Jayate, Yam Yam Kamayate, Kamam, Tam Tam, Prapnotia, Sam Shayam, Sarvatra Jayam, Apnoti, Sarvatra Vijayi Bavet, Bumyan, Tariksha Divyanam, Grahanam, Vinivaranam, Rishiko Raga Sambuta, Vishapaharanam Param, Brahma Rakshasa Yakshanam, Durot Saranakaranam, Bujeva tala patreva, kavacham likitam shubam, karamule tritam yena, sit ye u karma sitayaha, deva sura manishyeshu, swam swam eva jayam labet, ekasandyam trisandyam va, yap 
पटे नियतो नर सर्व मंगल मंगल्यम मुक्ति मुक्ति चंडती द्वा त्रिशाति सहस्रा पटे शुद्धात्मन रन कवच से मंत्र मंत्र सिद्धि प्रजाते अने मंत्रजेना भस्मांत्रक बिब्रियास्तु त्रह भयम हरेवार जपमस्तु दत्त वारियामंत्रिय प्रसाद यो नरो मंत्र नरसिंहाचरे तस्ोगा प्रनश्य चुकुक्षि संभव किमत्र बहुनोक्त नरसिंह सदृशो भवे मनसा चिंत यू सतच्चाप्नोत संशय गर्जत गर्जय निजभुजपटल स्फोतय हतंत दीपय तापय दिवि भुविज क्षेपय क्षिपत क्रंद रोशय दिशि दिशि सतत संहर बर वीक्षत पूर्णय कर निकर सत दिव्य सिंह नमा श्री ब्रह्मांड पुराणे प्रहलादोक्त श्री नरसिंह कवचम संपूर्ण नरसिंह देव भगवान की जय भक्त प्रहलाद महाराज की जय श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय I don't see Malti Priya Mata Ji in the call. Ah, uh, I would recite Brahma Samhita, and please forgive me if I make any mistake. Mistakes. Golo kanam ne ne jadam ne thale chatashya Devi Mahesha Hari Dham Shute Shute Shu Te Te Prabhav Nishchaya Vihitashcha Ye Na. गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि सृष्टि स्थिति प्रलय साधन शक्ति रेखा छाये वयस्य भवनानि बिभर्ति दुर्गा इच्छा नरूपम पियस्य चचेत सतेश गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि शीरं यथा दधी विकर विशेष योगात संजायते नहीं तथा पृथगस्ति हेतु यह संभुत अथा सपैति कार्य गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि दीपाचिर हि दशानरम अभुपेत दीपाते विवृत हेतु सामन धर्म यस्तृव हि छ विष्णुतया विभाति गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि यह कारणारवा जले भजाति स्म योग निद्रम अनंत जगदंड स्वरोम कूप आधार शक्तिमलंब्य परम स्वूर्ते गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि यश्वाश्रित कलम अथ्वलंब्य जीवन तिलोम बिलज जगदंडनाथ विष्णुर्महांस यश कला विशेषो गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि भस्वान यथाश्म सकलेशु निजेशु तेज स्वीय कियत प्रकटयत्यद्र ब्रह्मा एश जगदंड विधान कर्ता गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि यत पाद पल्लव युगम विधाय कुंभ दन्वे प्रणाम सयेश गनाधिराज विघ्न विहंतमलमश जगत्तर गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि अग्निर्मही गगन मंबु मरुदश्च कालस्तमशीति जगत्र यस्मदिभवती विशति यम च गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि यक्षुरेश सविता सकलग्रहाण राजा समस्तुरमूर्ति अशेष तेज यशया ब्रह्मति संवृत कालचक्रो गोविंदमादिपुरुषं तमहं भजामि धर्मो तप निश्चय श्रुतस्तपंशी ब्रह्मादिकीटपतगा वधा 
ಜೀವಿಂದ್ರಗೋಪೇಂದ್ರ ಮಹೋ ಸ್ವಕರ್ಮ ಬಂಧಾನುಪಲಭಾಜನಮಾತನೋತಿ ಕರ್ಮ ನಿರ್ದತ್ತಿ ಕಿಂತು ಚ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಾಜ ಗೋವಿಂದಮಾಪುರುಷ ತಮಹಂ ಭಜಿ ಯಮ ಕಾಮ ಯಮ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಕಾಮ ಸಹಜ ಪ್ರಣಯಾದಿ ಭಿತ್ತಿ ವಾತ್ಸಲ್ಯ ಮೋಹ ಗುರು ಗೌರವ ಸೇವ್ಯ ಭಾವಹಿ ಭಾವೈ ಹೈ ಸಂಚಿತ್ಯ ತಶ್ಯ ಸದೃಶಿ ತನು ಅಪುರೇತೆ ಗೋವಿಂದಮಾಪುರುಷ ತಮಹಂ ಭಜಿ ಶ್ರೀಯ ಕಾಂತ ಕಾಂತ ಪರಮ ಪುರುಷ ಕಲ್ಪತ್ರ ಓ ದ್ರೋಮಾ ಭೂಮ್ಯಶ್ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಗಣಮಯಿ ತೋಯಂ ಅಮೃತ ಕಥಾ ಗಾನ ನಾಟ್ಯ ಗಮನಮಿ ವಂಶಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಶಕಿ ಚಿತ್ ಆನಂದ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಪರಮಿ ತದ್ ಅಶ್ವಾತ್ಯಂ ಅಪಿ ಸಾಯತ್ರ ಶ್ರೀರಾಬ್ಧಿ ಸ್ರವತಿ ಶುರಭಿ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಚ ಶೂಮಹ ನಿಮೇಷಾರ್ಧಾಖ್ಯೋ ವ್ರಜತಿ ನಾಹಿ ಯತ್ರಿ ಸಮಯ ಭಜೆ ಶ್ವೇತದ್ವೀಪ ತಮಹಂ ಇಹ ಗೋಲೋಕಮಿತಿ ವೇದಂತಸ್ತೆ ಸಂತ ಶಿತಿರಾಲಚಾರ ಕಟಿಪೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಮೇತ ಕೀ ಜಯ Lowest of all is located Devi Dhamma Mundane World. Next above it is Mahesh Dhamma, abode of Mahesh. Above Mahesh Dhamma is placed Hari Dhamma, abode of Hari. And above them all is located Krishna's own realm named Koloka. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda who has allotted their respective authorities to the rulers of those created realms. <laughs> the external potency Maya who is of the nature of the shadow of the Chit potency is worshipped by all people as Durga. the creating preserving and destroying agency of this mundane world i adore the primeval lord govinda in accordance with those will durga conducts herself just as a milk is transformed into curd by the actions of acids but yet the effect curd is neither same as nor different from its cause with milk so i adore the primeval lord govinda of whom the state of sambhu is a transformation for the performance of the work of destruction the light of one candle being communicated to other candles although it burns separately in them is the same in its quality i adore the primeval lord govinda who exhibits himself equally in the name same mobile mobile manner in his various manifestations i adore the primeval lord govinda who assuming his own great subjective form who bears the name of shesha replete with the all accommodating potency and reposing in the causal ocean with the infinity of the world in the pores of his hair enjoys creative sleep yoga nidra brahma and other lords of the mundane worlds appearing from the pores of hair of mahavishnu remain alive as long as the duration of one exhalation of the later mahavishnu i adore the primeval lord govinda of whose subjective personality mahavishnu is the portion of portion I adore the primeval Lord Govinda from whom the separated subjective portion Brahma receives his power for the regulation of the mundane world just as the sun manifests some portion of his own light in all the effulgent gems that bear the names of Surya Kanta etc I adore the primeval Lord Govinda whose lotus feet are always held by Ganesha upon the pair of a tumuli protruding from his elephant head in order to obtain power for his function of destroying all the obstacles on the path of progress of the three worlds the three worlds are composed of the nine elements with fire earth ether water air direction time soul and mind i adore the primeval lord govinda from whom they originate in whom they exist into whom they enter at the time of the universal cataclysm the sun who is the king of all the planets full of infinite effulgence the image of the good soul is the uh, as the eye of this world i adore the primeval lord govinda in pursuance of the whose order the sun performs his journey mounting the wheel of time i adore the primeval lord govinda by whose conferred power are maintained the manifested potencies that are found to exist of all virtues all vices the vedas the penances and all jivas from brahma to the meanest insect i adore the primeval lord govinda who burns up their roots all fruitive activities of those who are imbued with devotion and impartially 
ordains for it the due enjoyment of the fruits of one's activities of all those who walk in the path of work in accordance with the chain of their previously performed works, no less in the case of the tiny insect that bears the name of Indra Gopa than in that of Indra, king of the devas. I adore. Excuse me. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, the meditators of whom, by meditating upon him under the sway of wrath, amorous passion, natural friendly love, fear, parental affection, delusion, reverence, and willing service, attain to bodily forms befitting the nature of their contemplation. I worship that transcendental seat known as Shweta Dvipa, where, as loving consorts, the Lakshmi, in their unalloyed spiritual essence, practice the amorous service of the Supreme Lord Krishna as their only lover. Where every tree is a transcendental purpose tree, where the soil is the purpose jam, all water is nectar, every word is a song. Every gate is a dance, the flute is the favorite attendant, effulgence is full of transcendental bliss, and the supreme spiritual entities are all enjoyable and tasty. Where numberless milk cows always meet transcendental ocean of milks, where there is eternal existence of transcendental time, who is ever present and without past or future, and hence is not subject to the quality of passing away even for the space of a half a moment. That realm is known as Goloka only to a very few self realized souls in this world. Shri Shri Brahma Samhita Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai I want to call Pata Rupia, three parties, but it's a lamp, and if you're